You're listening to CKMS FM 102.7 Radio Waterloo. My name is Bob Jonkman. This is CKMS Community Connections. Today is Monday, May the 10th, 2021. Hope to have Peter Snow from the Soviet Influence in with us in, oh, a few minutes. In the meantime, I want to listen to some of their music. This is Plant the Bombs from their new album called Abolition Now. Soviet influence, influence. And, and a song called Plant the Bombs from their new album called Abolition Now. And I've got Peter Snow on the line. Good morning, Peter. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well, Bob. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Good to have you back in the studio. You were here, what, about a year ago? Yeah, it's been about a year, yeah. And what have you been up to since then? Uh, well, there's been a pandemic, so... <laughs> get through that um but our band has been hard at work we've recorded a lot of music last year somehow um and uh yeah that's that's been the main thing and obviously doing life stuff but you've but, uh, um yeah we've, you've recorded we've actually been able to get a lot done despite the restrictions and the challenges of that You've recorded a bunch of albums because you released something back in in January as well. Oh, I'm not hearing you, Bob. Oh, you've uh, you released you released something back in January as well. We did. We released uh, an album called Socialism: An Introduction mm-hmm. that was all recorded in the first probably four or five months of the of the pandemic. So from March on till about July, we. Uh, Basically, you know, we recorded a bunch of stuff, 
sent it off to uh, to a, a friend of mine, producer David Partridge, and he mixed it up. And we uh, we're sitting on it for a while because we thought, you know, maybe things will get better with the pandemic, and we'll be able to actually like, you know, do shows and do a whole thing. But that looked like that wasn't going to happen anytime soon. So we thought, well, we better actually release this. Um, so it's kind of thematically about um, you know ideas around supporting mutual support and 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 sort of uh, uh, critiques of of the uh, economic structure that we live in, things like that. So yeah, that yeah. was that album. And it seems like there's been a progression in the statements that you're making with your music over time. I mean, it's uh, you know things were nice and lyrical and musical to start with, and you know the uh, the word sort of washed over you uh, from the earlier albums you released but that's not the case anymore what happened yeah no i think we got i mean the world is is increasingly uh the challenges are getting more and more desperate right so climate change obviously being a big one but you know just i think as a group we sort of decided like if we're going to do this if we're going to be sort of a outspoken band then we need to be outspoken um, so we really leaned into that kind of messaging. Um, and it's, it's working well for us. Like we, I like it. I like writing songs that way. I've been enjoying it. Um, and I think, yeah, it gives us a real, um, space that we occupy. I think, you know, we're not sort of wandering about trying to figure out what we're about. We know what we're about and we're being very open about it and very direct about it. And, and that all four of us in the group are all really, that's kind of who we are, so it, it really fits for us very, very well. How's the reception of, of the new Soviet influence been? How are, uh, how's you your... Know yeah, sorry, yeah, it's been great, actually. People have really responded well, you know, I think um, a lot of people like music that has a, you know, a message to it, um, and, you know, we don't write, not that we couldn't, or, we you know, that it's bad to do this, but we don't write sort of, you know, love songs and breakup songs and all those sorts of things. It's not really our thing. And I think, you know, there's space for that. And the reception we've gotten, like, as we've gotten more outspoken on particular issues, it's opened doors for us. Like, we've connected with more opportunities and more people because of it. Um, you know, and I think because it, it helps us stand out a bit, right? Like, it's, it's something that we're doing specifically that other people aren't necessarily yeah. doing in the same way. You've got something yeah. um, on the Land Back Lane album. Can you tell us about that? How did yeah. that come about? To, well, what, tell, tell me what Land Back Lane is all about in the first place. Absolutely. So, um, I hope, you know, if your listeners know about what's been going on, Caledonia, the town of Caledonia and the, the Six Nations uh, Reserve, which is right there, have had longstanding disputes um, about land use um, that have, you know, culminated in a couple of... So there was the... I think it was the Douglas Creek Estates situation that happened a few years ago in this most recent situation um, where essentially a group of local uh, you know, indigenous people basically said, you know, this, uh, we don't like the way this land's being used. This is, you know, this should be our land historically and the treaties and, you know, mm -hmm. it can get too much into the nuance of that, but essentially they took a stand and um, our government spent something like, was they just came out like nine million dollars or something policing that or maybe it's more than that over the last year um something absurd but anyway people that are there the the, the land defenders they're called and then they've created this space called 1492 Landback lane it's sort of the what they've named you know their their area they've carved out and uh you know there's a, a musician or a band from london ontario who wanted to do to raise money for them because they need supplies they need you know things yeah, to help yeah. them support themselves um, and and uh, they put a call out, and we happened to be connected to them, and we were like, yeah, we'd love to be part of that. This is a really important issue to us. You know, uh, we've been following along with what's been going on in BC. There were the railroad blockades last yeah, year. We were, yeah. you know, supportive of that, and uh, so we want to be part of that. So we got managed to to get on that and be part of it, and it was really exciting for us because we've, you know, increasingly wanting to be part of, um, you know, our music being used for things that are building a better society versus you know just for our own purposes yeah so so that was that was a good opportunity for us and a lot of local like there were a ton of ontario bands that were on that so that was mm -hmm. really cool to see how many people sort of stepped up and said hey i want to be part of this yeah there's a, a live concert too i think they did something online on facebook yeah they did. 
Yeah, they did do a, like a concert thing. We weren't part of that, but we're they did do something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll have a link to the concert uh, in the show notes, radiowaterloo.ca slash ccc. So uh, those folks who missed it, uh, including me, can catch up on that later. So what, yeah. what did you actually produce for them? Yeah. For the land back uh, So we, Yeah, we had a song. It's called uh, These Chains. Um, and it's a song about... Um, I mean, really, at its heart, it's all about, you know, sort of waking up to what's going on in the world. Um, you know, I think for a lot of people, uh, it's really easy to, and I see this all the time, I have these conversations with people, and it's, you know, to just kind of accept the status quo as it is when you're comfortable. Like, for a lot of people, it's really easy just to be like, well, things are fine. You know, I mean, the pandemic is ending, obviously, but like, generally, and I wrote that, you know, in the early days of the pandemic, when we all thought it was probably not going to be, we didn't yeah. think we'd be here, I don't think. Yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't really thinking about the pandemic. I was thinking more about sort of broadly, like the world, you know, the, the, the tendency when you're in a comfortable spot to just be like, well, you know, if I'm comfortable, then things are probably fine. Um, and this, this song was really about like, no, things aren't fine. There's all kinds of things actually happening and have been for a very long time that we've just ignored more or less. And I felt like it, for me, it really fit with 1492 Landback because, you know, my knowledge of sort of indigenous issues with the, the government of Canada and the people of Canada, you know, really goes back to, you know, hearing about like Oka and Ipperwash back in the 90s. Um, and I was young then, I was just a kid and a teenager, but, you know, I was aware of what was going on a little bit. And then going to school as a social worker, so I'm a social worker and, you know, taking classes on, okay, what's actually life like for Indigenous people in Canada and learning about all that. That was an awakening for me. And, you know, I think for, but I was also surrounded by people who had no concept of that no concept of like what's going on for indigenous people in canada you know it's very skewed views very heavily influenced by you know borderline and openly racist ideas yeah. um that really didn't understand like the the history and the situation so you know and i grew up with that so around me so for me it was very eye-opening to to learn more and really understand the heart of the matter so yeah so that song's kind of about that and i thought it fit pretty well with with what uh, they're talking about. They're not specifically written for the land back lane issue, but it that encompasses one, all that. No, that one wasn't. No, that one wasn't. But then I ended up writing a song called uh, Two Weeks, which is specifically about um, the way the government treats Indigenous people's uh, claims, basically by, you know, saying, yeah, here's a solution, but it's a half solution, and it doesn't doesn't do anything, and it's past the point where... And it's like the water issue, right? They keep saying, oh, we're going to fix the water issue and all the... Res yeah. on all the and they never fix it. Shall we have a quick um, listen just, to these chains, and then uh, chat a bit more, and we'll uh, we'll get two weeks in there as well. This is these okay. chains, the Soviet influence, uh, which appears on the 1492 Land Back album.
Soviet influence. That was Oh No, Not Tonight, uh, something that uh, Peter Snow actually recommended to us uh, to play off as the, uh, the starting track on the show, which I didn't do, of course. So, Peter, can you uh, tell me a little bit about um, Oh No, Not Tonight? Yeah, that song... I mean, I love that song. <laughs> if I can say that about my own song, I love that song. Um, it it was one, you know, I was... I, so I work... My, my day job is in, in mental health treatment. I'm a therapist. And um, also someone who's had my own life issues with my mental health. And, you know, I always... People get, you know really isolated and and I'm not telling you really about not being isolated it's about like feeling isolated but reaching out to someone and and I didn't realize this until just actually this week funny enough I wrote that song last summer but I realized this week that the song was actually inspired by somebody so a long time ago when I was much younger I had a really really bad uh end to a relationship and and I and there was a night where I was feeling just totally terrible and didn't know what to do and I went on I logged on to the internet and uh, someone that I was sort of friends with, didn't know very well, was happened to be on their computer, and we started talking, and she was helpful and really supportive, and then that person ended up becoming one of my close friends. Um, and just the fact that she was there, like, it was totally random that she was there. Um, and so, I'm not saying it's kind of about that, it's just like that reaching out to find someone, get someone, um, get close to someone. The thing I love about it, besides the message, is just that it's just a really, like, rocking song, and it, it lets me when I the chorus is like super loud. I get to sing really loud, and it's always fun. So I like that part of it as well. Um, and yeah, and that's one that when we sent it away to be mixed was like just this song, and then it was mixed and it came back and it was like whoa, like Dave, who's the guy who, who did the, the did an amazing job and just turned it into this like really powerful song and it. it of all the songs we've ever written, it's the most streamed, it's been the most well-received, most popular, so it's kind of cool that way, too. It has a special place right now, anyway. Um, it's sort of getting over to that next step for us, I think. So you sent it out to be mixed. Um, hang on a second here. You say you sent, you sent it out to be mixed. Um, yeah. What does that mean? How how do you collect stuff in the first place to have something to send out? How does this work? Yeah, absolutely. So in the in the old days, you, what you would have done is you would have gone to a studio or worked in. I have a home studio and had everybody come in and record their parts, and then you would mix it and whatever. Uh, with COVID, what happens is everybody records things at their own houses as best they can. I collect all of it together, put it into like a. I use a software called Reaper. Put it all together, get everything like in time together. Um, and then extract each track, um, each piece of the track. So, like, you know, guitar, or vocal, bass, uh, you know, kick drum, snare drum. And then I sell that to, uh, in, the, in this case, David Partridge, who uh, operates a Helm Recording. He just moved up. up uh, he used to be out of, out of uh, Oakville. Now he's, he's moved up north um, and up, up there. Um but uh, then he takes the track and, and then puts it together and, and, you know, fixes everything and makes it sound good. Because um, when he gets it, it's very, like, just, like, everything is, you know, at the same volume and it's all very flat. And he just does his magic. And it's it's night and day. Like, listening to the demo versions of songs and then hearing what an actual professional um, producer can do is just boggles my mind. It's It's... You wouldn't believe, like, you can't believe it's the same thing. Yeah. So when, um, especially the digital era, right? So, yeah. yeah. So when you and, and the other band members deliver to you their tracks, um, is it separate recordings for the vocals, separate recordings for the guitar, um, multiple tracks yeah. for the different uh, drums that might be used there? Uh, when, introduce your band while, you're, while, you're, uh, while we're talking about that. Who's, who's in uh, Soviet influence? Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. so we're, uh, well, I'm Peter Snow, obviously. I'm the singer and I play guitar. Um, we have uh, Peter Morey, who's our bass player, mm -hmm. his brother Blake Morey. And Peter was in the studio with me last time yeah, he yeah. came on. Uh, yeah, and Blake Morey, his brother, is our drummer. And then uh, Ty McKenzie is our newest member. He joined us right before the pandemic hit uh, last year. Uh, he plays guitar. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the four of us. We're, uh, yeah, for, uh, you know, and, and we're sort of spread out. So Blake and Peter are in Kitchener. I live in Halton Hills, and Ty lives in Milton. 
right. so we form a little bit of a triangle. Um, and yeah, and we've all been in bands. Like Peter and Blake are younger. Ty and I are around the same age, around our 30s. And uh, but we've all been in bands for years, and uh, just sort of found ourselves through the internet. The power that you know that's kind of one way to find band members these days. So I found Blake, and then Blake had Peter with him. So we brought him on board, and then we found Ty along the way, who was looking for a new band, and he really liked our music and liked what we were doing, and we liked him. So it was a good, it was a good match. Right, right. And then you said you send it out to the studio. So um, plug for the studio. The, yeah. Uh, so it's Helm Record. Yeah, Helm Recording, H-E-L-M. Uh, they have a website. Um, I know Dave is looking for people right now. It's t- it, I mean, you can imagine, right, for recording studios, it's been a tough year. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, with lockdowns and things, you can't have people coming in. So, um, you know, it's it's been a tough year for anyone in that business. Anyone in music in general, it's been a hard year. And the performance opportunities obviously haven't really existed that much. And um, so it's been, it's and that's where most honestly where most musicians make most of their music, most of their money so right. uh it's been a been a tough year for for a lot of people um you know yeah. i have a lot of friends who like were were on the way up trajectory wise getting bigger and bigger audiences when the pandemic hit and then all of a sudden no shows yeah so no more you know, momentum right so it's really sad for you know for that exactly have you been doing video production as well did you release a video recently we put out, yeah, so for Not Tonight, I made a video, um, actually in this room. Um. <laughs> yes, I've actually seen, you, and, and that's not the only video you've been producing. You've been producing little vignettes of, of social commentary. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get to that in a bit. Totally. So I recognize the room. <laughs> yeah, this is my, so I, this, funny enough, so this is one of the byproducts of the pandemic. I needed somewhere to work at home. So I took, I had a shed. This used to be my shed and uh, spent a bit of time and and sort of turn it into a home office slash music space, um, which has been really great because I've been able to work from here. Um, I'm very fortunate that the work can move online, so I've been able to continue on and haven't had any interruption um, in my employment as a result. But uh, yeah, it's, it's I like it a lot. It's very rustic, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> the walls are all plywood, just painted. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's so. it's. Possibly it's not it's nice. not acoustically ideal for recording music, perhaps. Not perfect, but it it does the job, um, you know. And with now a digital recorder, you can you know fix everything pretty much. You know, as long as you yeah. get a decent sound inside, it sounds okay. At the start, you can fix it. I mean, and it's a, you know it's we we practice in here. I mean, you it's only nine by twelve. It's small, but we actually yeah. when when things were opened enough that we could have practices again, and we couldn't practice outside because it was winter early winter we uh, had a couple of practices in here and it's tight and loud but it we fit so yeah. i anticipate you know we'll be doing that but in the summertime last year we just practiced outside you know i'm in the country so we can spread out you know and not disturb too many neighbors <laughs> yes <laughs> it's another luxury yes that's definitely a benefit speaking of countryside we have uh, um, on the line with us as well jeff stager from the agriculture show good morning jeff good morning bob good morning peter good morning bob hey jeff Good to have you on board here as well. Uh, you mentioned earlier, before uh, the, the last musical break, uh, you'd uh, written something else called Two Weeks. Yeah. Yeah, Two Weeks is... Uh, we wrote that song... I mentioned this last time I was on. We wrote that song at a show because people wanted an encore and we had run out of songs. Oh. So I just started playing something and the band just joined in with me. Okay. Um, and lyrically, it was nonsense and doesn't resemble what it is now. But musically, it's pretty much the same. Um, it ended up being a song about um, sort of the way that uh, our government, at least here in Canada and in, in the U.S. as well, I think, you know, sort of approaches uh, issues with marginalized groups, but specifically indigenous people, um, and sort of says, you know, well, it was a problem before, it's not a problem anymore, we're going to fix it, and then they don't actually fix it, um, or they offer a solution that's really not helpful or useful um, to anyone. Um, and we've seen that in a lot of places, uh, in a lot of, you know, I don't know if, if you've ever seen the, uh, the truth and Recon- uh, reconciliation call to arms that came out of that. A lot of the stuff in there has not been done or done in any oh. kind of effective way. Um, so it's one thing to publish a nice little book with all your ideas in it. It's another thing to actually act. So that sounds about that, you know, and so the way people are willing to ignore stuff, you know, like the fact that, you know, there's a large number of indigenous communities that don't have clean water. Like, that would never fly 
if there wasn't like, if Limehouse where I live didn't have clean water, like there would be hell to pay. Let right? me tell like, you a, a personal story here. I live in Elmira, uh, Elmira just north yeah. of Waterloo, and back in what 1989 or so. Uh, they discovered some groundwater contamination. They had a pipeline in here within a couple of years. You know, a huge pipeline pumping water in from Waterloo. Um, no problem. So, uh, you know, it's, it, the government is spending lots of money on pipelines. Uh, you, they're the wrong kind and going to the wrong places and carrying the wrong material. Some water pipeline. Yeah, same here, right? Like, they're, they're talking about a new development in Georgetown because they want to get water from the lake. And if they build a new development in Georgetown, they can pull in water from Milton straight from the lake because right. um, we're running out of water because there's only so much groundwater yeah but yeah. uh but the, you know political will is there then the solution gets found yes exactly. but when there's no you know when people don't care enough and it's or the group's not important enough then stuff doesn't happen so and when the you target know, population water. tends to be non-voters you know a different nation um you know nation to nation stuff but not necessarily yeah. voting for the current government. Uh, there's, there's just not the will to act by the pol politicians. You know, it, it takes some sort of. It, it, it takes a moral stand by the politicians to to make this happen. And I'm not seeing that. Absolutely. Well, plus they can get away with saying they're going to do something and not doing something because people will forget. Yes. Like, oh, they said they were going to fix that. So for most people, they'll just like, well, they said they were going to do it, so I guess they did it. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't go any further to look into it to see if anything actually happened. And that's why activism um, is so important, you know, keep that front of mind. Yep. Two Weeks is on an EP called This Band is So God, which I thought for was uh, a typo. <laughs> Tell me a bit about that. <laughs> uh, should I explain that title? Yes, please. My, uh, my seven-year-old son started a band. Um, himself at the beginning of the pandemic and he called it this band is so god and i just thought that was such a clever like i don't even know where he got the idea to call it that that's just what he called it and i was like i'm stealing that from you yeah because um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... it's it's just such a weird phrase i just love it i don't know yeah. so yeah that that's what we ended up uh we took that because it was his his little seven-year-old brain he he had a band he wrote songs he did shows at home for the family. Like, it was a whole thing. Oh, it was great. Keep it up. I mean, you know, if, if any of that is, has made it to digital recordings, you know, fire some uh, towards uh, CKMS. And uh, I'm quite <laughs> sure that, that we'll find some spot on the air to play that. There you go. Awesome. Music awesome. And, and, yeah. and, and locally produced music is, is, is what community radio is all about. So Absolutely. let's have a quick listen to two weeks. And uh, when I come back, I, I want to uh, take a bit of a station break because we're in the middle of our funding drive. And so I want to talk to, uh, to you and to Jeff uh, about uh, community radio and how we can keep community radio going. So listening to two weeks from the album, the EP called This Band is So God by the Soviet Influence. It's been two weeks or so late. 
same way as courts of law. They do not hand down sentences. They throw thunderbolts. They do not condemn kings. They drop them back into the void. And this justice is worth just as much as that of the courts. Soviet influence called two weeks. Peter Snow on the line, got Jeff Steger on the line. Welcome, this is Ecamus Community Connections. We're uh, recording from our remote studios. So, um, I'm out in Studio North, uh, Peter's out in Studio East, and I guess Jeff's out in Studio South. <laughs> The pandemic has really put a crimp in a lot of different activities. And you say you've uh, not had nearly as many, um, well, no live gigs at all, of course. Have you been uh, doing anything remote, uh, you know, uh, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, um, as, as paying gigs? Has that worked for yeah, you? Yeah, we did a bit. In the beginning of the pandemic, we were able to do a bit of that. Um, then we got, in the summer, we did... Um, uh, like a paid uh, video thing uh, that uh, this company in Hamilton was doing. Um, we haven't had much lately because we've sort of been focusing on, um, uh, well, finishing up the music we've been recording and also doing a lot of social media stuff. Um, and uh, we actually, I can excitedly say we're working with a record, a very small record label in the UK about releasing a song over there oh. with some promotion. So we'll see what that leads to. Excellent. I'm not sure yet, but up in the air yeah. and i guess the other thing i'll just quickly if i can plug something really quickly that will be a show is in august we're doing uh we're, we're organizing a compilation another compilation to raise money for the toronto prisoner right uh, just uh, yeah. prisoner toronto prisoner rights uh project which right. is um a project of mutual aid to support people who are incarcerated or not uh who are re recently out um anyway doing a compilation and we're going to do a big live stream thing for that in august with a bunch of bands um which is in the works but uh, okay. I don't have a lot of details yet, so I'll, I'll, I'll share them with you, Bob, once I know more about it. Okay, okay. Um, but that's something that's in the works as well. The album cover you sent me for the new album, Abolition Now, is um, yeah. covered with different groups and, and uh, URLs and, and things that need yeah. support. Just, uh, yes. Can, can you run down some of those? Prisoner Rights was one of them. Yeah. So, yeah, pris Toronto uh, Prison Rights. So, like I said, they're doing this mutual aid thing where they basically offer m small grants of about $250 to people who are either in jail or recently out of jail who need support in different ways. They've raised, uh, they've raised about a hundred something thousand dollars, but they need $300,000 more to meet all of the requests they've received. Um, that's sort of the situation. Uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, uh, Canada and Toronto specifically, uh, we support their work around um, uh, police, uh, you know, changes to policing in Ontario uh, and Canada broadly, and also around, you know, uh, anti-racism kind of work they're doing. Um, and then the other two agencies, Passan and uh, Prison Justice, are also uh, working in that sort of uh, criminal justice uh, change area, um, which is something that also really matters to us. Um, the prisoner rights thing, our bass player, Peter, that's his one of his big causes. Uh -huh. So he was very interested in that. Um, I come into the sort of police reform area from the mental health side so wanting to see great changes the way that's done um uh, but also recognizing the other impacts from the other side around um uh, you know, justice faced by you know many communities um from policing so that's kind of how that came about and with that album any money we make streaming it or well pretty much streaming it's not really selling it um we're giving to those those different groups and we're asking people to just donate to them on their own without you know involving us at all um because we think it's really important so we just want to elevate along with our music we want to elevate you know causes that matter to us and sort of give them more visibility yeah, exactly. so that's been 
been pretty helpful. I'll provide a link to all those organizations in the show notes as well, radiowaterloo.ca slash ccc, and you'll be able to uh, click on the link and follow through on that. Speaking of fundraising, however, CKMS itself is uh, in need of funds as well. You know, we've, uh, we've been hit by the pandemic as well. There's a lot of programmers who uh, aren't able to, uh, to do their shows because the studio is closed. The studio's been closed for, what, four months now, five months. And um, the way that CKMS works is it's a, a cooperative venture. Uh, members who uh, join Radio Waterloo have the ability to, to do programming uh, on the air, uh, and they pay for that uh, for that opportunity. It's uh, you know thirty dollars for an hour show a week, thirty dollars a month for an hour show a week. But when the studio is closed, uh, what are programmers going to do? We've been, we've been fortunate in getting a, a small grant to get some remote live to air kits. And so you know, some of the programmers have taken those and have uh, recorded their shows remotely. Uh, I'm doing my my darndest to try and do a, a live show remotely, uh, but it's difficult and we saw uh, a decided drop in our income and in, in our programming fees from programmers who just weren't able to uh, to carry on and so we're reliant in a large part on donations and this is our fundraising week we're hoping to raise a thousand dollars for um, for the radio station and i think a good portion of that money is going to go to studio upgrades. Uh, we are in, a, in the Beamer Box building in downtown Kitchener. It's an old building and ventilation is not great. As we know now, the pandemic, the uh, coronavirus has largely spread through aerosol transmission, which you know lingers in the air. The studio is a small space. It's even smaller than your studio, Peter. And so um, yeah. we want to get some, uh, some professionally installed um, HVAC stuff in there, uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, uh, to actually move air through the studio so that it becomes uh, a safe place to be um, even after the pandemic. But not something we budgeted for and something that you, the listeners, can really help us out with by making a donation. Donations can be made to radiowaterloo.ca slash give. Um, and any amount is useful. You know, if uh, if you make a donation of uh, five or ten dollars, uh, that goes towards putting up, uh, you know, maybe the the fan or or maybe installing the plug. Um, make a donation of twenty five dollars, and that gives you a membership as well. Uh, radio station membership is twenty five dollars, and that gets you a host your own show um, deal as well. Um, I really like to see the donation level being made at a hundred and two point seven dollars a hundred and two dollars and seventy cents you know one oh two point seven is our uh, frequency so if you can make a donation for a hundred and two dollars uh, that would be absolutely wonderful but any amount is useful a hundred and two uh, you know fifty one dollars and thirty five cents is good uh, do that twice a year and you're at one oh two point seven uh, but you know five dollars ten dollars or uh, twenty five dollars for a membership is great too radiowaterloo.ca slash give help keep community radio alive, help keep CKMS on the air, help open the studio again so programmers can come in and it'd be far more comfortable to have you in the CKMS studio than uh, to try and manipulate three or four different screens and, uh, and two computers. And uh, it's, it's, This is just not an ideal studio setup. I miss being in the CKMS studios. Anything to add to that, uh, Jeff? Uh, Host Your Own Show was um, an initiative that, uh, that you started. Yeah, thanks, Bob. You covered everything, but yeah, I'll mention the host your own show. So for you folks out there that said, you know what, I just really love to have my own just to see what it's like. So we have a special deal, and if you uh, send us uh, twenty-five bucks, we will have a show on your behalf, and you will be the main person, and somebody will be there to help you with the tech stuff, and we'll play the music you want, we'll talk about the stuff you want, and you will have the pleasure of having your own show. Say you did in the recording, and if you had a lot of fun, it'd be just great you became a programmer at our station as well. So, if you want to have a a great gift for your birthday or want to give away a great gift, you can give a friend the opportunity to go on the air and do their own one time show. (laughs) And, you know, if you like it, you know sign up for start your own show and, and uh, you know join us on the regular schedule that would be even more fun yeah any ideas for the Soviet influence to have their own radio show Peter I mean that sounds great I'm just thinking that you guys <laughs> talking about this I'm like we should we should maybe do a show yeah no yeah, absolutely I, I think you've you've sure got 
a, a, a wide range of, of things to talk about. You know, you've got the music, you've got the music production to talk about, and all the yeah. uh, political, uh, social justice stuff that, uh, you know, is, is just rife through uh, all the music that you've been making. So, lots to talk Absolutely. about. Absolutely. And that, that's what community oh. radio is, is good at, because that's not the kind of thing you hear on mainstream radio at all. No. Yeah. And I, like, you guys have been great to us. I just want to say that while you're doing this pitch. I mean, CQMS has been wonderful to us. So, I mean, we're going to obviously donate some money, but, you know, support. You know, we've been, we're, we're, we'll be pushing you guys out on our social media to be like, hey, support these guys because CQMS has been great to us. So, we're, uh, we're big fans. Yeah. We're big fans of the Soviet influence. So, there, there you go. It's, uh, <laughs> join the station, um, have some fun, and, and, it, it, I mean, it, it's called community radio because it's it's radio that broadcasts to the community. But it's the radio station itself is a community among itself. You know, um, we're all doing the same sort of thing. We all we may have completely different interests. You know, you might have uh, people who are um, you know promoting veganism, uh, for example. You might have other people who are uh, promoting um, oh, I'm not sure. Um, Hip hop music. Uh, we've got one of the longest running hip hop shows on CKMS, for example, um, Street Hop on uh, Thursday nights at 10 o'clock with uh, DJ Carmelo. Um, just such a wide variety of stuff. And that's the community within the radio station that you're becoming a part of. So, yeah. yeah. Is there the same sort of community that, that exists amongst? Musicians. I mean, there's there's a musicians' union, but that sounds a little bit formal. Um, do you do you see do you see the same people at uh, different shows? When, back when there were shows, oh, yeah. as you're traveling around. Totally. Yeah. I think what happens, right, is you build like a little bit of a scene community around you. One thing the pandemic has been great for is like, I think, goodness, people are a lot more like friendly and helpful with each other because none of us know what to do. We're all sort of. Like, how do we get through this? So there's been, there is a um, Discord. So Discord's an uh, online thing. Mm -hmm. um, started by this group called Safe Toronto Music Venues. And their whole thing is like, all these venues in Toronto are basically going out of business because they have no income. Yeah. Um, but it's really cool in there because there's like a whole community of Toronto musicians and Toronto GTA musicians and, and things like that that are on there and just sort of sharing ideas and working together and trying to do stuff. So... The pandemic's been really good for us getting to get closer to some of the bands that um, we already sort of know or didn't know that well. Um, and our work, like our kind of work where we're doing all this political stuff has been really helpful in terms of building bridges with bands because a lot of people want to get involved in this kind of stuff. So we've been able to make really good connections both in Ontario and across Canada with other bands that are like-minded. And um, yeah, so I think it's there. I mean... It, I, there is some competitiveness, I guess. We try not to be competitive. Like, we don't think of it that way. Um, but I know some people do. But mostly we just try to be, you know, we try to help each other out and, and build the best musical community. So I think, yeah, it's definitely there. But no no sort of um, formal organization of um, um, social justice bands or... Um, or um, there isn't. You know, no? That's a good idea. I've actually never really thought about creating something to... There's nothing I know of. I mean, there might be that I've never heard of, but yeah. I'm not going to say there isn't, but I'm nothing we know of. So that's actually a really good idea, and I feel like maybe we should do something with that. So yeah. I'm going to steal that idea from you, Bob, and I'm going to go <laughs> and, try and, and try to make that happen. Yeah, I know. I actually really like that idea. It's actually really great. What so. Picasso said, you know, uh, good artists um, create and great artists steal. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So yeah, I can, do, uh, I can take that so do it. Okay, time for another musical break, I think. Um, what else have you got in your repertoire that uh, I might be able to play for you? Yeah, uh, what would be a good song to play? Um, well, we talked about it or not tonight. Could you play that? Because I love that song. Uh, not so. tonight. Yep, let's uh, put that on there. Came from Socialism and Introduction as well. Yep. Yeah, any background yeah. to that? Uh, yeah, like I said, it's basically just about um, you know looking for support and help and how we can really just be there for each other. I think people okay. sometimes think you have to be an expert. But you don't really just gotta listen and care. Okay, uh, it's a repeat because uh, we, we've already been through this. Uh, but you know, by request, oh not tonight from the Soviet influence, <laughs> uh, from socialism and introduction. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the technology just does not cooperate. Here we go.
Not Tonight, a repeat presentation on uh, CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. I've got Peter Snow in the studio, Peter Snow from the Soviet Influence, and Jeff Steger from the Agriculture Show. Uh, good morning, everybody. You have said that this is um, something that you've actually had played on commercial radio. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, people, some people, <laughs> a couple of radio stations were like, hey, we want to play a song of yours, uh, which was cool. Um, kind of not surprising is the wrong word, but unexpected, I think is the right word. Like we didn't, um, we don't have like a formal like, agent or anything. So like any success we have is just through our own sort of hustle and good luck. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of, uh, right now. a lot of Canadian music out there, uh, uh, because we have, um, our, um, our Dropbox office at radiowaterloo.ca. So if any bands are out there who want their music played on CKMS, you know, send us a, a line at office at radiowaterloo.ca. Um, the backlog is immense because there is a lot of music out there. So I've got something like, uh, you know, 1200 messages in my inbox, um, and, you know, maybe 50 or 60 um, CanCon uh, requests, Canadian content requests by Canadian artists uh, that I will definitely yeah. get on the air. So if, you, if you've if you submitted something to office at radiowater.ca, I will get to you eventually. But uh, sometimes I've been as much as a year behind in that. Uh, Soviet Influence, however, is, is right on the top of the charts here. You know, two plays in one hour. <laughs> oh, you're killing it. <laughs> yeah. No, we love. I said this earlier. We love. We love the community radio. Community radio is so important. Yeah, it's so different. Yeah, it, it, it's great. You're right. It's 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 different every hour. You know, after uh, yeah. CKMS Community Connections is done, starting at noon, we've got the uh, the Can Queer uh, program uh, done by Luke Smith from uh, the NCRA, the uh, National Campus uh, Radio Organization. So um, you know, variety is is the name of the game here. You said you had something coming up. If you just want to quickly cover what um, you're doing in the next, uh, well, yeah. as Jeff says, in the next two weeks, two months, two years. Two hours and two days. <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> next two hours, Peter? Well, next two hours I'm going to have lunch. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's the main thing. i got to go and have some lunch. In um, two days? <laughs> in, in two days? And in two days uh, i got work to do, I guess. Work, work, real work, life work. <laughs> oh yeah, no. uh, but in the next couple of months, we'll go to two months. We've got um, we should have a new song coming out. Uh, like I was saying, in the UK and around the world, um, that's just getting put together right now. I'm not sure when that's going to come out. There's no timeline yet. And then, really importantly, in August, we're part of a compilation uh, recording for the Toronto uh, Prisoner Rights Project, and there's going to be a live stream event to coincide with Prisoner Justice Day, which is a, a national event. Um, and there'll be a bunch of cool bands. Um, Canadian, all Canadian bands that are going to participate in that. Um, it should be really great and really interesting. And if you don't know a lot about sort of prisoner justice and prisoner rights and the prison abolition movement and all those things, it'll be, we also going to have some, some, a chance there to learn a little bit about it and, um, you know, get some knowledge that you might not otherwise get. So I think that's, uh, I didn't know prison abolition a was a thing until about two years ago. I, um, had Senator Kim Pate on the show, mm. um, and mm. learned that, there is a movement to get rid of prisons because prisons aren't doing the thing that they are intended to do. You know, there's no rehabilitation there. This is this is punishment and retribution, pure and simple. So that's that's not a humane thing to do. Prisons aren't no. aren't working. No, it's not a it's not a good system. No, sure. no. All right, um, going to end off with. Uh, something from the new album called uh, Guns of Brixton. Tell me about Guns of Brixton. How did you come across Guns that? Yeah, it's a Clash song. I've, uh, I've been a Clash fan for a long time in my life, um, having discovered them when I was younger, as, as you do. Um, and uh, there's a really great live version of Guns of Brixton um, that I've always been a huge fan of. And it's a song that doesn't get covered a lot because it's sort of lesser known than like, you know, London Calling or uh, Rock the Casbah are the more famous Clash songs. And it, it's about sort of government violence. Um, you know, the the members of the Clash lived in London in the '70s, which was a you know there was a lot of stuff going on, um, class well, kind of class warfare sort of stuff going on then, um, and it's, you know in in the UK and uh, in really difficult times, and, and and they saw firsthand the sort of violence 
uh, the state could enact on people, and that's how I've always interpreted that song, so it really fit in well with what we're talking about. Yes! Yeah. 